world, wherever you are, you are here with the Young and the Rowdies. I'm your host, Patrick Young, here all the way in Athens, Greece. At the moment, I'm so excited to uh, being able to introduce our next guest. Um, you that are Gator fans know that this is my brother. This is one of my best friends of my life. Uh, I'm so excited to have him on the show. My guy, Will, you get all the way from Monaco. How's it going, my man? A bull hoy. <laughs> great, great, man. Can't complain. Uh, just got practice today, you know, so living your life, man. I can't complain. Everything's great. We pre I appreciate the background that you're giving us. Uh, tell, tell the people where you are right now. Uh, right now, I'm in, um, in Beausoleil. It's called Beausoleil. It's, it's a small city close to Monaco, kind of like near Monaco. And uh, I play for Monaco. So it's been uh, it's my second year. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. Everything's going well, you know, I'm getting ready for a game coming up this weekend and then uh, that's it. It's so it's so different for, I guess, Gator fans that haven't seen you in a while uh, that uh, you don't have the Mohawk right now. Yeah, I got boys now. So especially up a little bit now, uh, I do remember my Mohawk back in college. It's kind of like my signature, low key. But uh, now I switch it up a little bit, you know, I'm getting older now, so. No, it's not college anymore. Yeah, that's true. I switched it up too. I got I got a little bit of a ponytail. It's hard to see right now. I just got them twisted up. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just like I did it go. that too. I did that too. I had a ponytail. So it's good to just experience right now. Whatever. I got hair, so I'm just enjoying it for now. You know, I don't know what's gonna happen in the next few years. You know, you never know. So, well, this uh, you know this podcast, uh, the Young and the Rowdies, is for everything Gator basketball. So thankful for all the feedback we've been getting from everyone that's been sharing and rating and reviewing. It's been so cool. I've had Coach Donovan, uh, Jeremy Foley, Mike White, uh, Anthony DeRuzzi, a current player, uh, Pat Dooley. It was awesome having him on, Teddy DuPay, and uh, Matt Walsh. So far, you're and you're our, our last guest of the of the year. Um, first off, we want to we want to run through your journey. You know, of uh, tell us about your upbringing. Where where were you born? I mean, a lot of fans know who you are. But yes. it's nice to come back and talk to you now that you're almost 30 years old. <laughs> I'm 29. I just turned 29, man. So you got to see it. Almost 30 years old. <laughs> and almost six years removed from, from wearing the orange and blue. So tell us how you, where, where your journey started, man. Well, I was born in uh, Pesach. Pesach is a small city close to Bordeaux. Bordeaux is located uh, in the southern uh, west part of France. Uh, so I was Born there, but I was raised in Ivory Coast, Côte d'Ivoire, on the west coast of Africa. Uh, so I was raised there for 10 years. And after when I was 10, I moved back to France, but uh, close to Paris, where my family lives at right now. Uh, so I was there for about, you know, six years. And then I decided, I mean, my family decided to send me to the U.S. Uh, to play basketball. I was 16. So I got to Florida Air Academy, which is in Melbourne, Florida. I know some guys probably know where that is. It's probably like 45 minutes away, 30 minutes away from uh, from Orlando. So I went there. Uh, Walter Hodge, you know, went to the same school. Some other players also went to the same school, but Walter Hodge is one of the guys that, you know, well known because he obviously played for Florida. So I was there for two years. Then, uh, yeah, I got recruited by Florida. And then, you know, obviously went to Florida for four years. And then uh, after that, I decided to come back to France to become a professional athlete. So, yeah, it's been my uh, seventh year, yeah, my seventh year, yeah, uh, so far. So I'm healthy, you know, I'm still playing. I'm thankful for that. But it's been a journey, and I'm really thankful for the journey as well. But, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's been fun. I just want to you know, add up the years and uh, then go and see uh, what's next. You don't, 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 don't try and jump through that whole process, bro. You, you can't just say you went <laughs> from France to, to high school. You know, we got to yeah. go back to how, how, when you were getting recruited to come to America, you know, how, would, how did that process mm -hmm. first start with your family, the unknown, the uncertainty? How did they take all that? How did it begin? And then when you finally were like, you know, I'm going to take that leap and just go, how, how did that all happen? Well, I, Went a year before to I did a camp five star camp in uh, in Washington D.C. Okay, I had an uncle that lived there, so my dad wanted me to go there and just see, you know, how I was going to handle myself playing as the guys, you know, one of the best guys in uh, in the country playing against American players and see, you know, my level. And I did really well. I had some teams that you know wanted me to stay. I joined the summer and play AU with them, 
but uh, that wasn't you know the purpose of me coming there that year. So um, after that, I went back to France, and, and throughout the year I had like two schools that keep you know kept in touch with me. And uh, come here in February, I went back to the United States to visit those two schools. One was in DC, and the other one obviously in um, in, uh, in Melbourne, Florida. So uh, you know after at the end of the year I was yeah, I was uh, yes sixteen, and uh, I didn't know if I wanted to try to go to the US or want to stay in, uh, in France. I wasn't the best part, prospect of my age. And I, you know, at this age, everybody really loved, you know, the US and wanted to go and play there. And like, you know, I think that was kind of like a, a dream for us growing up, just, just being able to just be in the US environment. So um, I had, my, I had my, my visa for, it gave me six years, my visa. So I was really, you know, really excited to go. I wasn't really sure if I want to go or not, but my dad was really excited. My mom was like, no, he's not 18. You know, he doesn't have his high school diploma, diploma yet. So I don't want him to go, blah, blah. So my mom was really like against me going for a long time. And uh, some people that were close to me, some coaches that coached me since I was younger, were telling me, yeah, if you go to the United States, you're going to lose yourself. Don't go there. You do this for your dad. So I had a lot of you know, people just talking to me about different things. It was weird because it was my first big decision. Right. And I realized that, man, like people can actually like, you know, they don't, want you, they, don't want, they don't want what's best for you. Even if you want that for yourself, you can go against that. And I had to like learn about it, yeah, you know, even if he's like a guy that you know for a long time, he wanted me to stay there for him, for his own benefits. So he couldn't stay because, you know, I was a player that he bought and he didn't want him to stay there. But for me, it was better for him to go in the US. So after, you know, negotiation with my mom, she was like, you know what? I said, mom, I'm going there for one year if I like it. I'm staying. If I don't like it, I can come back. I always come back to France. France, I'm not going to go anywhere. You know, if I like it, then I'll stay. They give me six years, and, you know, I want to see if I can, you know, maybe try one year, and, and then we see. She ended up staying. I'm staying for six years. You don't stay, huh? I'm stay, That's first. That's hard at first, but, you know, I just I just liked the way things were, and I was in a great, you know, great school, great, great coach as well, and um, everything was fine, and I was able to adapt and uh, showcase myself and uh, get some scholarships. When you came to uh, Florida Air Academy in Melbourne, did you speak English at that time? Like a lot of English really well? Uh, I mean, I was one of the best in my class when I was in France, but uh, my English wasn't that great because we learned English from, from England. And uh, I had a really, really deeper accent as well. So we go straight to Florida, we'd have some Florida, they just speak differently over there. So it's like, it was tough. But the good thing was that the school I was in, was the national student school. A lot from all over the world were coming to Florida Academy. So I was the only student from out of the state, out of the US. So I kind of fed in because in my team, like we were like three or four guys were American. The other guys were from Russia, Puerto Rico, or Africa. So I wasn't the only one that was you know, fluent right away right. in English. So I didn't feel like I was left out. Okay. Yeah. So you, you get to Florida Air Academy, um, you start to transition what, what was life like there at that at that school and, and how was basketball? You have a really close relationship with with, a, with your coach there. Tell people a little bit about that. Yes. Well, coach, Coach Arvin Gopal, I think is well known uh, in high school, for the high school. He sent a lot of players in college. Uh, I think he's the guy that was able to attract a lot of players as well. So, you know, he, he and myself, you know, had a really close relationship back then and still today. Was really close to my to my dad as well, so it was really perfect fit for me because I knew, you know, I knew the guy, I knew of him, and my dad also knew and trusted him, so it was perfect fit for me to go there. Um, it was tough at the beginning because it was a military school, so it was really strict. Uniform uh -huh. every day, six a.m. formation, like you have to. I'm about, you don't know, but I was doing some like military <laughs> stuff every single day, man. People don't know about it, but I was in military school. Making the bed every day, right? All that. Making, but making the bed every day, inspection every single day, but every day we had we had inspection every day. Like we had, it was it was fun. Now I think about it, it just really helped me out because I, when I got to college, I was just like, and I was really like, you know, organized and really like, you know, uh, committed to to what I was asked me to do. I think started in high school. Uh, classes at the classes weren't that hard. Once I picked up the language, I felt like I was really comfortable at school. Basketball was really tough uh, because uh, when I first got there, you know, I was, I was really soft. And French players, especially back then, they are known to be soft. So when I got there, it was most a lot about you know my physicality wasn't you know wasn't good enough. I was getting pushed around, I was getting you know Bro, you were skinny, on the ground, and I was yeah I was also skinny, but I thought I was you know, I thought I was solid, but I was really skinny. And uh, it was tough. It was tough because also I couldn't really express myself like I wanted to. 
article, a small dictionary that I had with me. And uh, I would try to add words, you know, to make a sentence. Sometimes like I would take 10 minutes to add words together and try to speak, speak my mind and make a sentence. And then I'll, the sentence would be wrong. I get frustrated that I can't, I can't talk because I, I like to answer to people and talk to people and I couldn't do that because I couldn't right. speak the language well enough. And it would take me so yeah. much time to have one good complete sentence. Yeah, but um, you know, with the help of my coach as well, I put a lot of work in, you know, extra hours, start getting a little bigger, more confident, uh, start winning games as well, you know, start winning games with the team, and you know, slowly I just, you know, kind of just grew and adapted to the situation, um, felt more and more confident, like I said, and uh, I was like, yeah, I like it here, you know, I want to stay, and you know, Scarlett start looking at me, few offers start coming in, let's go. I'm, I'm actually just saying, you know, I can actually play a little bit. So why not just stay here and just... Do you remember your first, the, first, uh, the first college that was interested in you? Canisius. Uh, Canisius College. Okay. It's, uh, it's upstate. Where is it at? Close to... Uh, where is it close to? So, is, I don't... Is, is, is it, no, it's not in New York. It's somewhere upstate. I think close to the Canadian border. That was the first school that I remember because I was the, the I was high. I didn't know what it was, but my coach explained to me that you they really want you, like they want to, you know, commit to them. And that's when that was the first. I remember that was the first school that that recruited me, that wanted me officially. Um, you know, we, you and I talk about this story all the time. Um, so back in, back in high school, our senior year, yep. um, I was already committed to Florida at this time, and uh, you and I were in the same two A uh, division in in. Um, in Florida basketball. And Coach Donovan was telling me going in, because you know, we, we ended up lining up against each other in the regional final. Yep. I got a picture um, of the chip off. Yeah. <laughs> in the regional final, Will, Will you get? And I went to Providence School in Jacksonville. Will's at Florida Air Academy. And Coach Donovan tells me, hey, Pat, we're trying to recruit this guy. Will you get? You know, if you get a chance, uh, you know, say something to him, you know, try let him know that we, you know, we really want him. I had never spoken to Will before. I had never known him. First time seeing him, you know, watched him on film. Uh, I knew he was good. Uh, um, so literally, like, a few minutes into the game after tip-off, I'm like, hey, bro. <laughs> come on up. We'll be really good. We'll be really good. You really come. He, he, he tells me, he was like, bro, you're so weird. Like, how are you talking to me? <laughs> In the middle of a game, like. <laughs> I tried to win, man. I, I tried to win, but I gotta lie to you. I, sh I was really focused. That was a big game for us, man. I still think about that game and how we had it, but we lost it. Yeah, that was, was uh, Stacy Poole's best game of his of, yeah. of, of the year. His best game of the year. He he, you know, was very up and down the entire season, but in that, you know, Will Cummings that went to Temple yeah. and playing overseas, he got a, a awesome steal in the fourth quarter to send the game to overtime. And then Stacy Poole just took over and over time. We were like, who was the time too? Yeah. That's crazy. Because we, but well, we had the game, bro. Right? Y'all had, had the game. game Y'all had it. <sighs> That's right. So, you know, uh, after that, what, what was it about Coach Donovan and, and the University of Florida that made you feel as though that was the place you'd want to go? Well, I want to stay close. You know, at first, I'm, I don't think everybody knows that, but at first, uh, I was really close to go to Indiana University. Okay. Yes, I was. I went there on a visit. I liked it there. You know, the Tom Crean was there. He was talking Tom to Green. me. I was sitting behind the bench. He was talking to me during the game. I was like, "Yo, if you were here, you would play." I was like, "Oh man, I want to go now." Mm -hmm. I was hyped. But then, you know, then I got hurt, and uh, I had to stop. You know, I couldn't visit any school early because I, I had my uh, my my ankle or my knee. I remember. So I was out for a little bit. So I said, "You know, what? I'm going to commit after season. You know, I'm going to just wait after season." And once you know Florida started recruiting me and stuff, Coach Lanier, like Tom Lock as well, uh, I feel like Tom Crane started to change because I was like, there was competition now. So the way he was talking about Coach D and his um, uh, his coaching staff and his, his program, I was like, why are you talking bad about them? I mean, it's just competition. Like I'm not coming to you guys, but it's, it's competition. So I didn't really like the fact that you know he was talking bad about them. And Coach G just stayed the same. Coach G was like, you know, I really want you. And, you know, we don't care about other schools that want you, all that stuff. We don't care about what they got going on. You know, you can't help, you can't help us here. And I really felt like Coach G, as far as, like, the human side of him, you know, he was just, was just, wasn't just a coach. You know, in high school, I had a coach that was more than a coach for me. Uh, and I, I kind of wanted that in college as well. And I was like, hey, you know, Coach, I, if I, you know, if I come, you know, I, I 
feel like, you know, you're going to be able to help me also become a better man. And also was the man of faith, so that really helped me out as well. And uh, we want to stay close to my to my high school coach as well. That was, that's one thing that, you know, really also pushed me to, to go there. And uh, I just thought he was honest. And I felt like, you know, me going to college, I was kind of like confident I would be there for four years. I want to go to school. I can be there for four years. I want to be like yeah. thinking about you have to transfer, his coach is going to leave. But I was feeling like, you know, he was the best coach, best coach that would be able to stay there for four years and see me go and help me more as a player and also as a human being. And uh, that's why I went there. Yeah, I, I, I share the same sentiment, man. I mean, it, it was a dream school for me uh, just because I grew up, my grandparents were huge Gator fans, but uh, Coach Donovan was definitely uh, the, the seal for me, just who he was as a man, is as a man, and um, his pedigree as the coach. So it, yes. it was no brainer. It was a no brainer. And so, Joe Kinoa too was there. Yeah. So and Joe when he called me, he hit me up. I was like, yo, he said, talk to, talk, to, talk to me a little bit about Florida. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm out there. I got, I got to go down. Wait, wait, tell, wait, tell us about that. So you said Joe, Joe Kim Noah called before you were committed? Yes, he did. He did. Uh, he just tell me about, you know, his experience at Florida, Coach Donovan, and how Coach Donovan really helped him as a player. Obviously, they won back to back. So, you know, and he being a French player as well, I'll be you know, the next French player coming in there. It would be dope. And uh, he said, you know, I come back, you know, check on you guys sometimes and, uh, you know, we can hang out a little bit, which he did, you yeah. know, so, and uh, well, it was great. Now he's a, he's, he was different back then. He was kind of like always hype, you know, on the phone. Yo, we, what's up, man, you know, you should go forward, man, you know, it was great when I was there, blah, blah, I was like, yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, thank you. But he was pretty cool though. I like him. I like he's, him he's very philosophical and spiritual now, extremely. Um, hey, guys. tired as well. And, Everybody say retired, but I haven't seen anything official okay. yet. But I think I think it's because I think his dad posted something about how proud he was of him. Okay. So, I, but he hasn't announced it officially yet. Okay. I'm waiting for him to just him to just step in and say I'm officially you know done. But I think he's I, mean, I think it's supposed to be done. My boy made enough money. <laughs> he did. He did. He went, I mean, people don't understand how great he was defensively and how much of an impact he had on the court. You know. Just, by the fact that maybe he wasn't the best offensive player, all that stuff, but guy was defensive player of the year one time, or was like right. the first all NBA, and his energy, like you can really teach that he, you know, was bringing every single game, and it was affecting the games in so many ways. People like kind of forgot about that, but he had a great yeah. career though. When Joe was on prime and when he was healthy, oh my goodness, he was a you know disruptive. Everywhere, the, but uh, everywhere. Let's get into you. Uh, so, so you come to Florida your freshman year. Uh, mm -hmm. And we start off as five. It's you, me, Cody Larson, Casey Prather, and Sky to Wilbekin. Um, you know, what was it about our group that made us special? You know, that you, do you think it helps having five of us at the beginning to cling to each other? And that's what helped make it made us so successful through our four years? I think we we're able to, you know, grow together. I think that we all have different backgrounds, different stories. Um, we are all different, different personalities, personalities as well, and uh, I think we're also, you know, all open, open to each other, you know, listening to each other and not really judging anybody, and uh, we just want to be friends. We came together, you know, we knew we had to learn a lot to be able to be one day leaders of this team. You know, we had great guys ahead of us, and we were still ourselves, like, you know, once it's gonna be our team, you know, you know, yeah. you're gonna wait for our time. You know? so you're gonna wait for our time. It's okay. You're gonna wait for our time. Yeah. Obviously, you know. People had, I mean, we had different paths. Uh, Cody ended up transferring. You know, Scotty was playing a lot of minutes uh, freshman year more than you know than us. You also were playing as well more than me and Casey. Casey, I'm having a great season. It's senior year, so like our, all our paths were different, but we stayed together. Uh, I just think that just because we had a vision. It's the first time we met. I remember the first time we met. We, met, uh, we knew that we were going to be special because we wanted us to be together. We were always hanging out together. And we were at some point, like, you know, this was going to be our team. Yeah. And, like, we're going to be leaders of our team. We're just waiting for that. You know, we're going to do everything we need to do. Get ready for that. We're going to learn anything we need to learn. Get ready for the time. It's going to be, like, our team. And I think that, you know, we were thinking about, okay, being one and done. Thinking about, okay, I'm going to leave a chance whatever. Well, no matter what it is, we're going to stick together. And we're going to be able to be one day leaders of this team. We're going to be able to lead this team to, you know, the highest um, place. And be, hopefully, you know, winning our championship. That's what our mindset was from the day one. I think that we stick to that the whole you know, the whole four years. Yeah, I think uh, you you hit it right on the head. We I, I can remember vividly just uh, us amongst ourselves. First week we we started uh, staying after practice early 
in that, that freshman year. And we were playing like one-on-one -on -one with each other and uh, just doing all this extra stuff. We did everything yeah. together, the food, FIFA, uh, just hanging out, living together, eating together. And at some point, it wasn't that we had a, you know, a knock on the leadership that we, that was before us, the senior, the, the guys, the uh, upperclassmen, we just knew that when we're in the position one day, we're going to do things differently. It's going to be our team. Yeah. And when we're going to be in that position. We're going to make things different. Like it's going to be, we're going to play for each other. We're not going to look, look for the stats and all this. We were, we're going to be about winning. And ultimately that's what we did, you know, yeah. and coach Donovan did such a great job continuing to uh, hold us accountable. Like, you know, you, you guys say you love each other, prove it by the yeah. way that you play and carry yourselves on the court. Because if you say you're about team and that you love each other and you're playing for each other, you know, you'll come with the right attitude and you'll give the best effort and do all these other things. And, you know, what was your relationship like with Coach Donovan once you once you got to to uh, campus? And it was it was great. I mean, obviously, I was still really close to my high school coach. But, uh, you know, having Coach D, you know, open his door for us. You know, obviously, we were going to Thanksgiving dinner as well with, with the whole team. And I feel like his door, his office was always open to talk about anything. I mean, I will lie to you, there's one time at some point in my senior year, and I don't think a lot of people know about this, probably nobody knows about it. I went to talk to Coach D and I was crying after we talked. I think that I went up for like, I was supposed to do something on the court and I went to talk to him for like two hours. We talked for like two hours and ended up crying after after we talked because it was deep. He says, told me some things that, you know, that's really deep that I needed to hear. It was tough, but, I just feel like it was always more than a coach. Like he was always like, you know, a guy you could come and talk to uh, about anything. He was always, you know, pushing us, even when we didn't want to hear, even when we wouldn't want to do it. He knew that, you know, there was more on there for us. And he was praying us for obviously, you know, just us being men and being able to handle whatever comes our way um, after after college. And we went through a lot in college, you know, injuries, you know, your suspensions, you have ups and downs, family issues, whatever, you all go through a lot. But I feel like he was always, always there to make sure, you know, we stay together. And he was always there to, like, listen to us. You know, obviously me and my family wasn't here. You know, obviously I was thankful for, you know, you guys being around me and, you know, also hanging out with your family as well. So I, like, love, you know, fam different families I had in the, at Florida. But he knew that, you know, there was basketball and on the court. Yeah. Sometimes he knew that, you know, we need to talk about different things. And he was always there for that. And I felt like... He was really good at separating, you know, basketball is here and, you know, and after, after basketball, we can talk about different things. And he was never too busy for us. You know, he was never like, okay, I can't talk now or like, yeah, I can't, I don't have time. He was always there to either to work out, either to talk. Like, he was crazy because I felt like he was one of the best coaches you know, I've ever had because I was able to have him for four years and he helped me really grow in, you know, four years. And especially in the professional level, it's way after have a coach for four years, you know, four straight years. It's quite difficult to happen. Man, as soon so, as I left I Kyle and went, you know, NBA coach Monty Williams was awesome to have as a coach in the co coaching staff. But when I got overseas, man, I was like, oh my goodness, we were spoiled. <laughs> but we sometimes were... you don't even talk to your coach, man. Wow. Hmm? Sometimes, like, your coach is here, you never talk to him. You just, okay, come do your job. And that's it. You have one word with the coach, okay, whatever. Bro, it's, you my, know, everybody do their own thing. It's like my first year in Turkey. You know, it's it's first of all, I was my first time living overseas, like living, living, like you know, you're there to stay to play basketball. Yeah. And my coach, I'm so fortunate, so thankful for my teammate, uh, Martinez Poitras. That's now he's a Lithuanian guy, and now he's a scout for the Denver Nuggets. But he embraced me. If it wasn't for him, I probably would have went crazy because the assistant coach didn't talk. The head coach in the six months I was there. The head coach probably spoke 50, <laughs> words, 50 words to me. <laughs> Bro, he would sit on the sideline, practice with con the worst warm up I've ever had. Bro, we we didn't. <laughs> Bro, we just like we ran around, did quick feet around the uh, the paint, the free throw line, and and just did like a a few other footwork stuff. And then he's like, "All right, let's go." Ten minutes. I was like, "That's it." And then <laughs> he just give hey. us the ball, and we just play up and down. And the coach would just sit on the sideline, arms crossed. He sometimes he'd be on his Kevin. phone, and I'm like, oh, yeah. so, like, is there a game plan? Like, is there like how am I supposed to play pick and roll defense? Or the only time he ever said anything is if we came in and we just weren't playing hard. 
uh, as long as we played hard, practice, whatever, hard, he didn't care. But I was like, man, I miss, I miss that environment with Coach Donovan where he would really teach us and coach us. And, and if he saw that our attitude was wrong or something was, was up, uh, even yeah. before, like you and me, <laughs> whenever we were walking to the gym together, <laughs> How's it going? Are y'all, are y'all, <laughs> are you Mr. and Mrs. Yet today or Mr. and Mrs. Young? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was always said that. It was always said that. It was always said that. It was just his energy, man. It was some days we come in the gym like, oh my gosh, man. Like I had a long day at school. I'm tired. It just might have to, you know, be able to practice. I also remember uh, how we used to warm up at the Charlesville. Boy. Oh, <laughs> I forgot about man. that. You had, bro. If you were uh, ready to go after this drill, man, <laughs> but you were ready to go after, if you don't, if you don't ready before that, you were ready after the drill. You were ready to go to play after the drill. The charge drill, bro. Okay, Pat, go ahead, Pat. Pat, come to full speed at you and take a charge, man. Oh, my goodness. So yeah, that, was the, that was the worst. But he had, he had ways to make us ready for sure. Let's, te let, let's tell the fans about this charge drill. So uh, our freshman year, Coach, he, he went away from it after our sophomore year. I think he picked it back up on our senior year a little bit. Even, yeah, he did, he did. Even Duke was doing it sometimes just to get us hyped. Remember when Duke was like, <laughs> yeah, that's so the, crazy. The charge, the charge drill would consist of one man standing underneath the basket. There'd be a person on the right block, the left block, and another guy right around the free throw line. And this person in the middle uh, would have to take three charges, consecutive charges from each person. <laughs> um, and then sometimes the coach yes, would get take it on the chest. And sometimes coach would, he would throw a ball, roll the ball uh, from the baseline to the half court. So you'd have to chase it down and dive on it, you know, just to, to instill that effort. And, you know, it's fair to say, I might've taken the drill a little too seriously. <laughs> Guys, you know, just you imagine you beautiful reason. Ir you. Irving Walker, five foot seven, Kenny Boyton, you know, five, 11, six foot. These guys having to take charges from, it was one day, I believe it was Vernon Macklin, Chandler Parsons, and I don't remember who was on the other side. But after I laid like five guys out, Vern just drops the ball and just spears me. <laughs> he does a wrestling move and just tries to tackle me. <laughs> and then, and then I, I wasn't mad, but I was kind of tight. And then Chandler was next, and he tried to hit me hard, and I didn't move. <laughs> I was like, "Good try, CP." Yeah, that. Oh man, that, that drill was a uh, was something to warm up. It was a great, was was fun drill, man. What really you was, get ready, uh, though. Looking back, especially into our senior year, do you remember the shell drill that we always ran every single practice, where mm -hmm. it was just like a dribble yep. handoff and rotation. You know, we coach Pelfrey, he was, he'd be fired up for that drill every single day. And I remember one day we just didn't have, like, we were like, ah, oh, we got to do this again, man. Like, why are we doing this drill start off practice? And it was just crazy that the little things, building bricks, like Coach Donovan said, that the little things in doing that right, we play Kentucky in the SEC tournament championship game, and they try to run that same action. Like, how ironic, how crazy is that? Yeah. They try to run that same dribble Turn handoff. Turn it over, too. End up winning the yeah. championship. That was, you know, that was insane. So, um, you know, what are what are some of your favorite moments, memories as a Gator? Favorite, favorite moments. I know. I don't even remember the first. My first favorite moment was uh, I think it was fresh was my sophomore year when uh, I got to stop. We got to stop. We we're playing at home, and uh, I don't remember who we're playing against, but it's a picture of us was me, you, Scotty, and Casey on the court, sophomore year. And I guess we're maybe up by one or two. And uh, I was guarding whoever was on the ball and I was able to, I guess, either have him turn the ball over or something. And we ended up getting the stop. So we ended up getting stop to look you win the game because after that we were just make free throws. And I was extremely excited. And like, I'm walking you no know, hype. And you like on the side of me, like trying to just you know hide me, hide me up, and Scotty's behind me, and Casey's on the side. So it's all four of us on the court. And I was actually, I was really excited. I think I have the picture somewhere, but I don't remember what game it was. But that was like the first one. I was like, damn, I can't really play. I can't really play here. Like I can't really like you know have an impact uh, at this level. Uh, I mean, obviously after that uh, senior year, 
you know, winning the game at home against uh, Kentucky and being H and O, Final Four, uh, uh, both ACC tournament we won uh, against uh, Kentucky last possession. Yep. We got to stop. Uh, I would say like maybe just seeing us just grow throughout the years. Yeah. Uh, you look back at, you know, when you get to college, you're 18, 19 max, and you leave it like 21, 22, and like just see how we all grew and became like leaders throughout the years, and we were able to lead the other guys. And I just have the memory of us, you know, just being together, especially our senior year, because we were really locked in. And it's funny because I remember my freshman year, we lost to, um, to Jacksonville. I was like, you. Yes, Jacksonville. You we lost at 12, to at 12, at 12, at 12. noon. On a no. Sunday. On a yes. Sunday. And we didn't play that much. She was like, you know, we were freshmen. I think CP was TP. Uh, Vern Macklin was there. Uh, AT is one of our leaders. Uh, and, then we went, and we lost that game. And Coach, you warned us, say, guys, it's the game of their season. Like, I, it's, I don't get my number. Just make sure you're ready. Make sure you're ready for this game because they're going to just give them their all. You guys are flowing as the game for the season. Just be ready. And it kind of just like, you know, uh, you know, you know how it goes. You know, you know how it goes. You know, this, you know, it's, just, it's, it's, it's not. It's okay, team. You know, it's, we're gonna be like, it's gonna be easy. And they beat us, and they celebrated like they won a national championship yeah. on our court. Yes, they did on our court. And we're, and we're just like, yeah, man. When we get older, but we're gonna be seniors, but and it was gonna come beat us like that. So that's not gonna happen. We told ourselves that back then, freshman year. Before we get by noon on Sunday, you know, lose like that against some team that's not supposed to beat us at home. And I was I always told by the mom because we. We knew that you know once it's gonna be our time, we can't let that happen, no matter what it is. And we almost had a game like that when we played against Auburn at home yes. during the ACC uh, yes. uh, ACC regular season. Yep. We had a game. We 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 played terrible. I mean, they were like were a great team, but like they were conf- they were confident. You know, they came in and like they were open our butt. They have said that we had no S for. We were just in the game, and we somehow we found a way to you know to win the game. You know, you had some big free throws, and at the end of the game, and I was just like. I don't even know how we won, but you just found a way to win because we just we can't lose that game. I think we just had that in us. We just had that in us. Like we say, you know what? We're not going to lose the game. Like regardless, we're going to find ways to win, and we always still find a ways to like win the game. I think I don't think we had that back then when we were freshmen. You know, one of the most awesome things from that year was hearing Coach John Calipari just talk about how much of an honor it was to play against a team like ours because. Yeah. You know, we didn't have a one and done outstanding freshman or sophomore, and we were a team that was the nucleus was built up of you know, mostly seniors and guys that have been through and played a lot of games. Um, you know, that that team, I'm not sure there, if there's many teams that you know will look like we did. Of course, we felt we fell short of that that championship. I think uh, we really had a chance. Uh, we just ran into a really hot UConn team, but man, that was by far the greatest year of basketball uh, I've ever, I've ever lived. I mean, it was awesome. It was fun. So it was just fun. Like we worked really hard and we, we had a lot hard. of issue with yeah. our teams, but it was, we just having so much fun on the court and we just playing for one another. There was no egos, you know, there was no contracts. There was no nothing. There was really thinking about anything else, but playing and just do what needs to be done during this game to win the game. And we knew that, you know, well, it could be a really, really good team. And yeah. we were doing all the little things we asked us to do, like things would just flow. You know, we just play together and we would just score, get back on defense, to get a stop. You know, that press no. we have, the, our press, we, that, we that, our press was just like... Up. Holding teams to 40 points. Yeah, yes. 40 you, you, just press, you just press the team and you could see in their eyes like they didn't want to just be here. It was like, oh my God, you have to press. We score, we just be ready to press them again. Like, we just be ready every single time. We will never stop. <laughs> And you could see in the eyes, like, oh my gosh, man. Now nah, he's way here coming up. He's Scotty here. I play on defense. Pat, you have Luke coming off the bench. You have Casey. You have Matt Frazier's hot. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got Casey here with his speed. You know, everybody was just like so lucky. In. And like, we were just like, nah, I mean, we're going to win this game. And we were just like, we will physically just beat people up because we're just like so intense at any position. And we'll just keep on going over and over and over. And now I'm thinking about, like, think about it. Like now, think about it. If you have to, when you score, we just press for 35 seconds, play defense for 35 seconds straight. 
Back in college, you would do it. You press, you score, and you press the team, and that's what they get offensive rebound. You have to play again in 35 seconds. Playing 20 seconds of defense is hard right now. Yes. You think about you used to play 35 seconds back to back sometimes, and like in a practice, you have, to, you have to get three steps in a row. If you don't get it, you still play just for like five minutes. Boy. And people would get so bad. Oh my so God. Fresh, like, freshman year. God. Speaking of which, I know you remember three stops in a row and Vernon, Vernon Macklin. And <laughs> when we, our freshman year, we had this drill where I'm not sure if it was four guys or five guys that would be around the the uh, three point line and there'd be a guy guys rotating in uh, in a circle five, five four or five guys in the circle as well and uh, the guys on the inside have to box out the guys on the outside to get the rebound and yeah. our first year will will has such a natural nose for rebounds um, that I remember you're, you set the record for most rebounds by a freshman in the game I believe but anyways yeah we, yeah. we kept yeah. those seniors in the drill for so long that it it stopped becoming it stopped being basketball <laughs> at one point. They would have pushed us. I grabbed like the ball. He said, Will, you're not getting this rebound. Sit your, sit your feet right here. <laughs> and the girl would the ball would go out of bounds and stuff. Like we'll just run out of bounds, just die for the ball and stuff and everything. We say you keep playing. Keep playing. Keep playing. Did you hear a whistle? No, you have to keep playing. Get the ball. Get the ball. And you just get the ball. That was, that was, those three stops, man. That was like, if you were there for like two or three minutes, you just start getting tired. You just like, you know, we're not, we're not going. You're not, you're not leaving. You stay, you're doing the same drill until you're like, you got to stop. We're not going to another exercise, another drill. You have to get stops. And because you will never let us slide. Like, no, we're not, no, we're staying on this. You guys are not ready to practice because we're doing it. We're not ready to practice. So we stand on this until you guys get it done and then we can move on to the next thing. And every time was never letting anything just, you know, slide and pass by. And that's what made him one of, the, one of the greatest, I think, as a coach. You know, that's what's kind of, you know, I got a chance to go watch the, the Gators recently with Coach White. And just with the rule changes, it's unfortunate because, um, you know, some a practice I saw, the guys weren't um, bringing the best energy to start practice. They couldn't they couldn't get this drill done right. And for us, if, we, it, if it would have taken too long, he, Coach Donovan would kick us out and he said, say, all right, I'll see y'all in a few hours. You know, because of the hours rule and the making scheduling, they're not able to do that, mm -hmm. really. Like, he kicked them out for 10 minutes and brought them back in. <laughs> That's all you can do because the rules and the structure of the schedule yeah. that you put your hours in before, you can't, like, oh, now I'm going to have the guys come back in after study hall. You, you can't do that. I mean, I remember when Coach Donovan on Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving our junior year, I believe is what it was, junior, sophomore or junior year, yep. we just were like, all right, Thanksgiving ain't nobody really trying to. Nobody really trying to practice hard. We came in, got energy. He kicked us out. His wife gets mad because she had a whole, you know, we were in games over Thanksgiving. Yeah. Christine Donovan, she gets upset because she had this whole meal catered and planned for us. So when we came back to practice, it was so quick and short. He was like, my wife's going to kill me. <laughs> you guys are lucky. <laughs> That's true. That's true. It's we so ended up coming late, too. Yeah. So, Will, let's transition a little bit. It's it's a known fact to Gator, Gator Nation that followed us those four years that you and I had somewhat of a bromance. I believe that's that's the word that the millennials use. Well, I'm a millennial. so That's, that's the word that's the word on the streets. Yeah, that's the word on the streets. I mean, yeah, we lived together uh, sophomore, junior, and senior year. Uh, we did a lot of things together. I mean, we have a lot of great stories. I'm not sure how many of them we can actually tell. But, um, you know, tell, tell people about our friendship, how we became such good friends, how uh, some of your favorite memories that we had together. How we became good friends. I mean, obviously, uh, we started living together sophomore year. Um, and just, you know, I think we had like the same kind of the same vision. Uh, I think we kind of understood each other as well. You know, I think also you, uh, open up to me and having your family also also open the doors to me when you know Christmas break when I couldn't go home and all that stuff. So I really got close to your family as well. And uh, you know I just felt comfortable, you know, felt comfortable around you. You know, we just talk about different things, open minded. You know, we talk about 
from basketball to faith to you know what's going on in the world and like I just felt like really connected uh, to whatever that was also outside of basketball and you know I think on the court we could see that we were also you know we connected as well on the court because we would play well together and we would know you know where you know other guys was at and we would know like how to complement one another I think that was really great on the court because that helped us you know win a lot of games yeah, and uh, I just felt like you know we both felt comfortable uh, with one another. I just think that, uh, you know, our values, you know, our visions were kind of similar. And uh, despite the fact, you know, we came from different background and all that stuff, I just felt like really right. connected. Also connected to the other guys as well, but I feel like just knowing yeah. I was just like, you know, close from the get go. And until today, until today, yeah. I have a lot of, a lot of good memories. Yeah, a lot for sure. Of good stories as well, you know. <laughs> Uh, I mean, one of them that's one story that you know I have in mind right now would be uh, the trip to Africa that we took. Okay, that's right. Because sure why Africa? Yeah. Because uh, we, you know, we ended up going to uh, Africa, so where I was where I was uh, raised at. Okay. That was and, amazing. Uh, for that, was amazing. that was an amazing experience because for you guys, and it was you, the Trayvon, Clayburn as well, uh, little Ash, you guys, and Alicia. Uh, I just felt like just, you know, being able to go there with you guys and then came inside was just amazing because you guys were able to see where I came from and be able to see another side of the world. I think that's one of, you know, the greatest experience I've had with you and with all the guys um, as far as outside of, you know, the court, the court stuff, outside of basketball. But, uh, I mean, we are, I have a lot of stories. I obviously, I can't tell. Oh, 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 you know, like, I'm not afraid. Hey. Oh, we're, we're grown now. You know, we we can check. You know, yeah. I'll tell you what my favorites. So, well, all right, go ahead. First, first off, I'll say tell you this. You know, you you taught me how to love soccer, for one, because I didn't like I didn't like soccer at all. Really, I didn't understand it. You taught me through FIFA, and now I appreciate those athletes as some of the best. I think I've I've beaten you one time. I think in FIFA, <laughs> once or twice, out of a hundred games, I think I've gotten you once or twice. Games. And I'm very proud of those two wins because the, the student finally got to beat the master one time. But um, okay, <laughs> so so for the people, Will and I lived together sophomore, junior, senior year. Uh, we volunteered together. We went to church together. We partied together. We uh, everything. We ate together. We went to training table. We uh, you know, if, if there was ever a window, you know, Will and I were, were always trying to help each other and support each other uh, in, in whatever way we could on and off the court, you know, there for Will when he was going through some some injuries, you know, Will, I know that you were that senior year as well, because you had just coming off, came off a micro fracture surgery. And, you know, yeah. people that don't know, that is one of the, uh, I, I will put that above an Achilles, above, um, above an ACL injury as far as the recovery for that. Uh, because it is just a lot up to chance to hope that the cartilage in your meniscus can, can uh, recover properly and that you'll be the same athlete, if not. And, man, you know, I, I was definitely worried for you going into that last year because, you you know, your explosiveness wasn't there. You weren't comfortable. Uh, yeah. You probably took, what did it take, two years for you to finally, finally really feel like yourself again? Honestly, and uh, I don't think club for know that, but that year – Coming to my senior year, I was gonna I was gonna register. I didn't want to play. I was I was kind of like hesitant about playing because I was like maybe I need another year to just you know be make sure I'm 100 percent and come back the year after that. But you know the trainers were telling me the doctors telling me you know it will you fine like your knee is fine you know it's, it's mostly it's mental so like obviously you're not 100 percent right now you feel like not 100 percent but your knee is fine. But I felt like I needed maybe like some more time to be able to come back 100 percent. But obviously you know. Being there with you guys, and um, yeah. I end up, you know, playing the whole every game of the season. I was really afraid because I felt like I wasn't 100, I wasn't my best. I think that wasn't like physically I wasn't at my best, but I don't think I could just wait another year and having the extra year and being a fifth year senior. And also, you know, you guys, we came together. I felt like, you know, it was just, you know, it was just a way of me having to fight through that, you know, mental battle and just being able to be with you yeah. guys and, and help you guys the best way I could because I feel like. The year after would have been, never been the same. And yeah. Um, yeah, it was tough. It was tough. But um, I would say maybe, uh, yeah, uh, 
because I would have you have to get back your strength on you on your leg, and that's like it takes a lot of time because if you play, you can't really walk on that. Right. And I kept playing and playing, you know. Obviously, during the summer, I also keep playing. I would say that you know it took me at least like a year and a half, two years, two years maximum. But I was able to also cut, you know, I to find a way to play the game differently because of your yeah. body. You started you know, shooting just, a little just bit adapt. Before. Exactly. So you you just adapt to it. And one thing that you know I was always had in mind when coach, you know, coach D would tell us was that you guys never play 100 percent You never play a game 100 percent Everybody has some kind of like issue in their body before the game. You're never gonna play the game 100 percent Once that time you felt like you were 100 percent and he was right, because I feel like, you know, we also have like this little thing, you know, whether it's some small injuries or coming up from injury, whatever, but you are never at 100 percent But you can still play though. Yeah. Okay. And I always felt, you know what, I can still play, I can still, I can still help my team out. So I'm just gonna do that. And uh, you know, I was able to play the whole year. I yeah. didn't miss any game. I'm really thankful for that. And I think that, you know, it was one of the best years I've had as far as a, as far as a player, because you know, obviously when a Having a great, a great year together and uh, and win you know, championships. I think that's that was really worth it. And we also had a, the record of you not being undefeated uh, yes. in a in the regular season, which is crazy. I was mad that Kentucky did it the year after, but you know we did it first. And, and uh, you know, yeah, yeah. Man, just looking back, I'm I'm so proud of you for you know being able to push through that part mentally. Like it had to be so hard. A lot of questions of why did this happen now, et cetera, et cetera. And, and you just trusted in the process. And I mean, look at you now, no. you're not, I mean, no, no one's body is perfect, but you know, you're doing well, you're playing uh, in your seventh season now as a pro in Monaco. That's but crazy. The story I want to bring up. <laughs> I go ahead, go ahead. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. All right. So I don't, I want to say it had to be after the season. You and I, uh, we took a scooter. Oh, it was during football season. That's when it was. It was during football season because that's when they had uh, one-on-one cantina in Midtown had the big tent right next in the in the in the uh, that big parking area. You and I took the green scooter. Rest in peace. <laughs> Rest in peace. We took the green scooter and we parked it like because uh, we knew we were gonna have have a good time. We were like, you know what? If we if we drink, we're not going to drive the scooter. We're just going to walk it back or something. I don't know. I uh, you, you parked it somewhere on campus in like a hidden location. I went. I met with some friends at the swamp, and you were with some friends at Cantina, and both of us drank way too much. Not, well, I don't know about you. I'm going to speak for myself. I'm not. Gonna speak, I'm going to speak for myself. I drank way too much. All right, so, all right. for some reason in my mind, something told me that. Smartly, we don't need to drive. We don't need to drive. We need to walk home. Yes, we need to walk home. I didn't, my phone worked. I didn't think to call Will. He called me a million times. I like, this is when you, when you drink too much, you forget everything. So I decided instead of trying to find Will, instead of trying to call Will, I, I went back to get the scooter and I walked it all the way home to the dorms. <laughs> I walked all the way home to the door. You remember the story now? Yeah, yeah. Will, I feel so bad for Will. I can only imagine what was going through his mind at this time. I parked the scooter after walking it. Uh, I go to my room and I pass out. And I wake up, I don't remember anything. Will, he wakes me and she's like, bro, like, you, you went missing, you went MIA on me last night. I have no idea what happened. I was so worried. I came back home. And then you showed me a picture. <laughs> I was butt naked, just passed out <laughs> of my bed with the lights, <laughs> the, door, the door open. Just <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and I was like, I, saw I was open. like, nah, bro, that wasn't me. <laughs> nah, I, I, it was nothing I could say. It's me. I'm. I was just butt naked. <laughs> 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 I was like, yo, I don't know what happened to you last time, but I was like, I came home. I was like, what is this guy doing? But the lights is on, the doors open. I'm like, bro, you all right, man? Knocked out. I was like, yo, is, is he okay? But it was so bad. That was funny, man. I couldn't wait for the next day to wake up and tell you about it. I was dying. That was, yeah, that was <laughs> when, when somebody has a picture oh, yeah, of like that, you have no words. I had no words. I was just like, ah. My bad. 
dead ass funny. I remember that. Because I was like, what is it? What? How? And the light, the thing was, the light was on. Yes. That's what's funny because the light was on and the door was open. I was like, so do you want everybody to just walk here? Like, exactly. Like, what do you want to, what's going on here? I could have closed the door and, and just went to, yeah. Yeah, but you don't want to do that. We got a few minutes left, Will. We want to talk more about your current situation, current life going on. So after you left uh, the University of Florida and graduated, you went on to play professionally. And uh, <laughs> something exciting just happened in your life not too long ago. Want to tell the people about that? Yes. Uh, well, I'm engaged. You're what? Uh, so engaged, yeah. Yeah. Close to uh, my fiance now. About a month ago, so you know, obviously, she said yes. She said duh, but after she said yes, <laughs> she didn't say yeah. together for a while now. So uh, you know, she said I think it was the right time. Things are going well as far as uh, you know us being together, and uh, she's a former player, former player at uh, Penn State. So she got bounced, but you know, in athletics, so more athletic than me for sure. But you know, she's great. Everything is great. You know, she's happy. She's here now, so I'm happy that she's here, <clears throat> and uh, you know, things are going well. Uh, yeah, so hopefully in the next few few years I'll be a man man and uh we'll see how, how that's gonna work out, especially with uh, the whole COVID nineteen stuff, but we won't see. So it, it was pretty difficult in the, in the middle of COVID to uh, continue to uh you know cultivate your relationship, continue because because of you were in Monaco when she was back in America with yeah. the travel restrictions. That was you know, how long were you guys apart? Eight months. Eight months. Eight months, yes. Because she ended up she ended up leaving. She left to go back to the state to see her family. And then she got stuck. So she, there was no way she could just fly back here to come back for yeah, for about seven, eight months. Yeah, we were trying to figure out different ways for her to travel to come here, but it didn't really work out that way. And finally in uh, yeah, in the end of October, she was able to to get the um, kind of like some kind of like visa or like some permission from the embassy to be able to <clears throat> To come here because we have to show that you know we've been in a relationship and she's coming here for me, blah blah, all that stuff. So yeah. a lot of people watch and uh, that she let her, they let us come. I mean, they let her come. Well, I'm, yeah. I'm so grateful. I know you had plans uh, earlier to propose, but because of the the time apart, yeah. the, forced, the forced time apart, nothing you can do. It took a little bit longer, but um, you know, so glad that you could have that great highlight of 2020. This crazy I know, year. Right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think everything happened for a reason. I think, you know, uh, I was, you know, really, really confident about me doing it. I just didn't know exactly when. And I felt like, you know, whenever it was the right time, we the right time. Right? You know, I wasn't trying, really trying to just think about it too hard, trying to take a day at a time. And uh, when she got here, you know, it took like some time to really try to organize the, the, the day and all that. And you know, I felt like it was time to do it. I just did it, you know, I don't really think about it twice. I just, just go with my guts and have faith with. What happens next? That's how awesome. it's been my whole life. So, so I got I got one more question for you, Will. Before I let you go, right. um, you know, what does the future post basketball for you look like? I know that there's a lot of you've done a lot of giving back. You've you 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 have a heart for uh, helping other kids. Uh, hopefully, look to to be the next Will you get and have an opportunity to do what you do. Mm -hmm. And uh, obviously, you're a man of faith as well. So serving and giving back those are huge to you you've been doing so much through this pandemic saying involved uh probably going to do be a lot more of that for you when you finish playing you know so what is the future for you if you could orchestrate it yourself uh, well right now i'm i'm working on uh bringing this uh basketball court to you know the team i was with when i was in france growing up so I'm working with the city council to just, you know, being able to bring the basketball court inside the gym I used to play in because I felt like that's uh, that's one that's one dream I had in my mind is, you know, having kids playing on the basketball court, you know, I just feel like that's, that's the minimum. We didn't have that, but I feel like that would change a lot for them. Uh, as far as myself, I think, you know, probably I could see myself being like a scout maybe. That would be something that would be interesting in. I also was able to comment some games with uh, this local channel here last year. Actually, I commented some uh, NCAA games. <clears throat> okay. It was, yeah, Kentucky against Kansas and uh, some other game. But I really liked it. I liked it a lot. It was really fun. I feel like with uh, what I have, a background and also some experience, they don't have that kind of player here, kind of person here in France 
I could really know, I could really help them uh, know more about how it will go inside the NCA team, inside the team in college. Okay. It's my experience. I think they will need that. So that's something I could do. And I can also, I'm thinking about also maybe starting this um, kind of one on one um, interview thing because uh, I think about all the players that were able to do something, you know, after their career uh, right away. You know, I have some teammates, former teammates that were able to, you know, just go from I'm playing basketball and now I want to be done and it's just transitioning directly to another job. And I would want to interview those people one on one to tell them, not to ask them how did they do it for you know for future generation. Like how can you explain to us like how did you set up you know your post uh, basketball career during your career? How can you you know help a, te- a kid right now who's like on you know, twenty between twenty or twenty five whatever? How can you help him being focused on basketball and sports, but also preparing his after career? Yeah. If you can kind of have this, not maybe maybe a podcast, or maybe like maybe like a one-on-one kind of thing with them, or I can interview someone maybe once a month, uh, so they can explain to us, especially like French kids, you know, this is what I did during my career. This is how I prepared my after career. Yeah, and I feel like you you don't really take the time to ask those people how do you do it? How did you right. manage to you know play until you're 33, and 34, 35, you already have a job set up? You know what I'm saying? Like what was those different steps you took? Who helped you out doing it? And I really want to create a platform where, like, maybe I can two people can come and share the experiences for us, yeah. you know, because you know, or younger kids that think, okay, I know I'm going to play basketball forever. Like, how can I prepare my after basketball right. career? What yeah. different, you know, steps or advice you may give me? And that's something that I don't know how I'm going to do it yet. I don't know how I can do it while I play. I'm still, I'm still playing because I feel like if I do it while I'm still playing, uh, it will be even bigger because I also, I'm also, I still want to be a basketball player, but I can also do something on the side that will be more impactful. Just gotta find out a way to you know kind of just put this together. But I have plans. I have plans. I'm not worried about. You know, I, I believe it. I feel like I could be in the states, you know, or I can go back to the US and maybe find a job there. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, I can live in France. You know, I can go to the motherland. I, have, I, mean, I mean, if in my vote, somehow you being somewhere within an hour or two from me, that's just you know you and me starting our families kind of close. It's <laughs> around the same time. You know, so they can kind of grow up and play and we can coach them together. That's that's my dream. But anyways, brother, I want to thank you so much for your time. It's been an honor. I love you. I'm thankful you too, man. to see you. Um, man, that was really fun. We didn't get there. Man, you and me, you know, when we get on the phone, we can talk for hours. That's but, facts. Uh, <laughs> that's facts. That's facts. That's facts. You're right. You're right. But you know, that just means that just means in the future, we're going to have to have a part two and fill, fill uh, Gator Nation in on some more stories. For sure. For but anyway, Gator Nation, this was my brother, Will You Get, on uh, episode whatever number of Patrick Young and Rowdies. I'm so thankful that you tuned in on wherever you're listening. Please subscribe and share on whatever platform, Spotify or Apple. Uh, Gator Nation and world, stay rowdy.